Roger, you uh, you lost the first point like 13 of 17 games, and then you won eight of those games. You feel relaxed. I don't un I don't understand. <laughs> In 13 games. Matches or games? Games today. Yeah. Out of 17, you lost the first point. Okay, got it. Now I understand what you're talking about. You came back and That's how it felt as well. So <laughs> when that happened, did you feel tight or relaxed? Did you <laughs> Not relaxed, but I felt like that's a bad start. Even though on some of them I don't think I played poorly. Uh, I think Rafa picked a side which I served on again, stuff like that. But that's something I need to do better. You know, that's for sure, um, because going down love 15 on your serve is not something you want to do all the time. Going down 15 love on his serve, that's something that's, uh, that's not a problem. Uh, you just move on and you wish you could have won the point, but uh, you know, there you can only try your best. But on your serve, you f I feel like a 15 love lead uh, can be quite critical, you know, down the stretch in the game. Roger, first congratulations. Thank you. Um, you mentioned in the on-court interview that you noticed maybe Rafa's footwork was off a little bit today, and you definitely were playing aggressively when you took your time away from him. Did you notice that early on, and did that affect your strategy at all? No. I mean, for me, it was all about coming out and trying to um, play the way I did in Australia. I didn't think it was going to be that possible, to, quite honor, to be quite honest, because the, the court's more jumpy here or more rough, let's say, so it's harder to put the ball away. But I have seen as well, like against Johnson yesterday, when you do serve well and you stay on the offensive and you press, um, you can actually play some really good aggressive tennis here. And it's hard to dig your way out of defense because the ball doesn't skid on you as an attacker. Um, and I think uh, I did well again today. Um, you know, I said it yesterday, it was more a sprint than a marathon. So getting in the lead was crucial. And then just staying on the offense and pressing was the goal for me. And um, once I got the break in the second set, obviously he had to be very careful that he didn't get down double break. And I was able to hold my serve and he couldn't find a way, had to get into my service games more frequently. And uh, next thing you know, it's, it's all over. So it uh, was a really good performance by me, I thought. Uh, Roger, you win the, the match in 6-8 and it seemed to me that it was easy. Is that true when you were playing? I mean, physically it was easy, you know, because we didn't have many long rallies. Uh, it wasn't quite uh, intense. It wasn't three and a half hours like in Melbourne, but we knew that, knew that going in. Um, if you look at most of the matches, uh, like Kyrgios against Djokovic or you name it, there is not that many long rallies unless both players really want it. When one guy doesn't want to have long rallies, you know, you can bail out with uh, big serves, big shots. and. Uh, I think Rafa knew that he had to do some of that too. Uh, it wasn't enough just to putting the ball in play. And that's why the, um, the points stayed short. Um, so for me, it was a physically a good match. Also looking ahead, uh, it's always good saving energy, conserving energy for the rest of the tournament, but also for the rest of the season and for your life. Because every step more you take on court <laughs> has, an, uh, has an effect down the road, I believe. Roger, you've had a lot of matches not very many consecutive wins against him, and now you're at three straight for the first time, and you're, you're getting that sort of achievement at 35 surprise you, or what does that mean to you to be, you know, having this, this hot streak and this rivalry has been very tough for you? Yeah, it's been a t yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's a nice feeling to win the last three, I can tell you that, but um, most importantly, uh, I won Australia. That was big for me, and on the comeback, I mean, I'll look back at that and think that was one of the coolest things that I ever experienced in my career. Um, so, um, Basel was special too, for many reasons, because I used to be a ball boy there. I never played Rafa prior to that finals. And then uh, now here, after the Australian hype, you know, to, to play here in America right away, um, all of them are very special. I mean, all of the all the matches that we have played um, are unique in many ways for both of us, winning or losing. Um, so I take it. Uh, but obviously, can't celebrate too long this time around. We've got to get back to work in a couple of days. Roger, besides the court, what do you think were the big differences like between today and in Australia? I don't think we had quite the rhythm that we had in Australia, but we knew that going in. Um, and I think he, especially with the baseline, he didn't control the ball as well as he did in, in Australia. Um, I actually 
surprised myself by the control I had on the baseline because against Steve Johnson, I really struggled to control the ball. So I thought it was going to be even more crazy against uh, Rafa uh, with his spin and his lefty hook and everything. It was going to be much tougher because in practice this morning, I hardly made any returns. I didn't know what was going on. So I thought it was going to be rough. But then I came into the match and I warmed up with Rafa in those five minutes. I was like, ooh, actually I'm feeling pretty good and the spin is not bothering him so much. So I wonder why that is. And that stayed like this uh, uh, during the match as well. Fans love all of your shots, but I think they particularly love your, your backhand. Could you give us a few preform thoughts about your backhand, how it's evolved over the years, how you've worked on it, especially recently? And you do a lot of video work with Yvonne. It's avoiding the net a big deal being adjusted. Um, well, I think with the bigger racket uh, head size, I'm definitely having an easier time to come over the return, especially, and then stay aggressive throughout the rally as well. Um, clearly, because it has more power, I have to be careful, you know, how I manage that, because the ball flies out of the racket faster than uh, with my previous racket before 14 um, that I had from, you know, for, for a few years there. But um, so for me, it was, uh, I think, the work that I had in November, December, it's 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 weird, you know, but it just it, you just feel like it's paying off, you know, because I played, I hit so many balls in practice. You you go much more rhythm, 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 and then eventually you play points and sets, and you realize all that rhythm you almost don't need it, you know, because look at the rallies today. There was hardly any normal rallies against Steve Johnson. One's a slice, one's a huge topspin, one's a, a block return, and you never play. 10 backhand to backhand shots, but in practice you, you practice those a ton and eventually they're ingrained in the system and you feel way better. And I think the backhand and putting has, has gotten better because I've been able to put so many hours onto the racket now and f really uh, since, uh, since this year I feel super comfortable with the racket and I think um, I've also gained confidence of stepping into it. Uh, I mean obviously you've got to take it on the rise and for that you need good footwork because if the footwork's not right you won't be uh, on top of the ball. So um, I think all my coaches throughout my career have told me to, to go f more for the back end, but uh, I used to shank more. So maybe deep down, I didn't always believe that I had it, you know, uh, in the most important moments. But uh, I think that's that's changing little by little, which I'm, I'm very happy about. Roger, just uh, forgive me, but what's the evolution on the racket since 14? Has there been any other change? Because Paul Anacom wasn't quite sure whether there had been anything else that you've done. Uh, let me just be clear. Uh, I need to be just be sure. I think well, I changed it in the 97 square inch uh, in 14. Yeah. In 13, I was testing uh, when I had back problems, which started here. Uh, I was testing rackets through the clay court season after taking wild cards after losing early, I think, in Wimbledon when I played Stad and uh, um, Hamburg. That was a different kind of 97 square inch racket that I was uh, trying with Wilson. But then the problem was the back issues were still not 100% clear. And I came to Cincinnati, was practicing still with, you know, the bigger racket head size all the way to two days before the match against, uh, or two days before the first round in Cincinnati. And then um, I pulled the plug on, on the big racket and just said, you know what, first I need to figure out my back. I played the rest of the season with the 90 till the end of the year. And then I got back into testing, tested a different kind of racket again, which I felt was even better than the one I was uh, testing in the summer. And then I started basically, and I guess I played Brisbane and Australia. And then I made the semis, I think, and lost to Rafa maybe in Australia. Uh, so that's when it started. And then paint got put on the racket eventually after the year, because the first one was just, uh, it wasn't sold, so you can't put any. Any, any color on it yet. So that's kind of how it went. But no change since then? No. I mean, it's a bit of a different paint now, the black, to what I had before. So that plays slightly different, but not much. Roger, a couple of years ago, Pat Rafter said that Nick Kyrgios was the best talent he's seen since you. Um, he's, he's Australian, so he's might be a little bit biased. But um, do you see any similarities in the freakish talent, I guess, that you've got and some of the talent that he's got? I don't know. Um, that's really up to others to judge. Um, you know, 
what are we talking about? When we were both 17 or 19? Uh, that's the question, you know, yeah. like. Well, he's 21 and you won your first major, what, 20, so. Uh, uh, I was 22 when I won my first major, so I still got time. But <laughs> um, no, I don't want to say I was a late bloomer. I don't think I was uh, per se, but the problem was that I had other guys like Leighton and Safin and Roddick all winning slams before me who were my age. So I think that really helped me to elevate my game and actually draw motivation from those guys that I wouldn't, didn't want to lag behind those guys. So that was good for me because that gave me, gave me power to work harder at myself uh, and, you know, I see what Pat's saying. I think both our games need to be more need a bit more time, you know, especially on the mental side and on the physical side. Um, just bringing it day to day, everyday practice, all that stuff doesn't come as natural for maybe Nick and myself than for the others. Where I thought, you know, they whether you're fully grown or they knew exactly what they needed to do in practice or, you know, tactically and. Technically, they were all very sound already. I feel like Nick and me, we have a lot of options, so it's hard for us to always pick the right one. And maybe there are some similarities more than anywhere. Last three questions. Um, can you talk about the way Nick is playing? He's got I think he's two wins over Novak, but also, do you see any kind of parallels of facing him the next round? Maybe it might be fresh, but when you faced Pete at Wimbledon, I mean, it was a couple years ago. Similarities, geez, I don't know. Um, it's not Wimbledon here. Um, and we've played before already. Um, I played Pete one time, that time. It was my first time on center court, so I think there was much more at stake, really, than what's now. Um, and I think uh, he's more established than I was back then already, or I felt at least, because he was already beating, he's already beaten great players for, for a while now. I don't think I was doing that great as he was, you know, and I didn't have that, I didn't have that big of a game, you know, uh, per se with the serve and everything. So I don't see that much to be quite honest, but I'm very impressed by him taking out Novak back to back weeks on Novak's best surface. Um, and I hope it's going to lead to something great for Nick that he realizes, you know, if he puts his head down and focuses that he can bring it, you know, day in, day out. Um, week in, week out, that's going to maybe take a bit more time, but uh, just that he can run through tournaments, that's why he, he can win tournaments, because uh, when it matters the most against the best and in finals, he's there, and uh, eventually he will need th that. But that's a great quality to have already now. Roger, it's been almost a couple of years since you last played, Nick, and you've on the one occasion. What are your thoughts going in to tomorrow's match, or the next day's match? Um, about coming up against him again? I'm happy it's not on the birthday of my boys because I miss being with them and I had to waste a match point and lose that match. And I was like, what a waste that was, go to Madrid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I felt. So I'm happy that uh, my family's here. It's not anybody's birthday. And uh, I could just play, focus on playing tennis and uh, I'm playing on, in more normal conditions because Madrid plays very different, super fast, I had my chances. I think I was even up a break, set in a break maybe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know what to tell you. Um, he's a great player. He played great again today. Uh, he played good against Zverev as well. He had good Acapulco. Um, so it's really going to be interesting to see if we play day or night. I don't know if, how much that plays into, into the matchup, but, um, of course, I'd like to get him back. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> she fell asleep. <laughs> it's okay. I was so intent on She's on a jet lag, <laughs> <laughs> like most players are. Um, you keep saying that you're on the comeback. You're on the comeback. Till April. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's missing that you expect? I mean, time. Okay. I'm playing through different continents. I played in Australia, played in the Middle East, now I'm playing here. And then once this is done to me, the, complete, the, the comeback's complete by April. That's how I saw it um, in November. And I'll stick to that, that nothing's changed just because I won Australia, that I'm, I'm definitely ahead of schedule and I've had no setbacks. This is a tough surface um, for the body 
because you can change direction on a dime. So this is the ultimate test, if you like, playing here in Indian Wells in Miami. So I'm, I'm very pleased how my body's pulled up. And uh, it's great to see that um, I'm playing as well as I am. I didn't expect it because I was tired still in Dubai. I think that has something to do definitely with Australia still and healing the injury that I had. So I got the energy back and the sparks back in my, in my legs and in my game. And um, I'm playing good, so I'm very happy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys.